Let me just take an example, if I can, because it's important to who we are and important to where we have to go and some of the things that we need uh, in our lives. Let's just take one scripture. We're going to take one scripture. It's Isaiah 26, verse 9. It doesn't matter what translation you're reading it in, because I'm just going to, I'm just going to really focus on one word. Isaiah 26, 9. It says this. I'm reading it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it in two translations. My two main translations. Now, if this isn't one of your main translations, it's okay. It doesn't, it's all good. You stick to your translation you like. I'm reading first from the New King James. It says, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. So there you have night and early. It says, For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Now let me just read from another translation. NAS, which is New American Standard, which I've got right here. At night my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. For when the earth experiences your judgments, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Now, let me, I'm going to point out two quick things. The first one I'm just going to point out and move on. These are my two main translations. If I would have just read the New American Standard, which I did for the first 20-something years of my lives, and, and didn't even use New King James, it wasn't around back then, um, I would not realize when it says, Indeed, my spirit seeks you diligently. I would not realize, unless I went to the Strong's Concordance or some other dictionary, I wouldn't realize that all the while the King James was saying, my spirit within me, I will seek you early. So right there, one translation took that Hebrew word and it said diligently. And then they, the, 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 the people that chose to translate that way, they said, well, I would rather that you understand this word to mean diligently. Because listen, if somebody gets up early and seeks the Lord, like it says in the New King James, if somebody gets up early, I will seek you early, they're being diligent. So it does. Clearly, it takes diligence for somebody to get up early and seek the Lord. However, I would never necessarily arrive at that conclusion unless I study the Hebrew a little bit. Got out of concordance once in a while. You got to dig to learn the difference between just the two things that I read you. Now, here's the thing. I, I really want to take this verse and point out something entirely different that also we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know, but I want us to get another lesson and why it's important for us in our Western mind. I'm still talking about these two categories that used to be on the whiteboard. I was going to use it today, but I'll to save the time. We're thinking Western, Greco-Roman mindset versus a Hebrew Eastern mindset and all the things that it entails. I'm not going to list all those things again, but we've got these two columns and I keep adding to those columns. I'm thinking, yep, there's another one where we are locked into this one mindset and we will never get to the really what the Lord was intending in his word. We will miss out on key things if we don't learn to focus more on how these people saw it, the time that they were writing it. The content and the context. All right. So here it says, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. First of all, if you're just reading your Bible like, like, like we all do, like we all should do, you might just skip right over that verse and not even think anything of it. After all, you're on a Bible reading plan, you've got to get the kids, you've got to get dinner, you've got to get the laundry, you've got to get to work, you've got to get this, you've got to get that, and you've got to get my chapters written. I don't know how you do things, but this is the way I do. I've got to read my chapters for, for the day, and I just, this is the diligent part of me, but I, I'm not rising up early to do it usually. I'm staying up late early in the morning because I haven't gone to bed yet. That's usually me. However, I digress. If I hadn't, if something in, it's by the Spirit of God hadn't stopped me and, and, under, and looked at this verse a little bit deeper, said, man, I want to dig into that. That verse, well, I just, I'm reading 10 chapters in Isaiah today. Can I really stop there? But you just do because it's the Word and the Spirit. And the Spirit of God wants to reveal Himself to you. To you. Not to me to tell you. To you. To tell me. Yes. Both. Both. 
All right, so I'm gonna, I hope I can point that out to you today. Now this word learn, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Well, this same word is translated 55 times to teach. It's translated 22 times to learn. It's translated the word instruct three times in a few other different ways. But this same word is translated 55 times to teach. Now let me just, ra- let me just read that scripture to you again. With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will teach righteousness. Could have been used that way. So Lord, let me just stop right now and ask for your help with your word that you would reveal something to every one of us right here in this room today by your spirit. I just pray that eyes would be open, ears and hearts would be open to hear you. You said my sheep will hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. And so we trust you this morning Lord by your spirit you're speaking to every single one of us because you care way more about us than we could ever imagine. And you want us to be led and guided by your spirit. So we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. So which is it? The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness or the inhabitants of the world will teach righteousness? Do you see how the the difference? If we say that the inhabitants of the world are going to teach righteousness, it's a far cry opposite. It's in in my way of thinking. I wrestle with this. This same word translated twice as many times teach as, as learn. Which is it? Who said it? Both. It's not either or. All right. Now, I probably would not have stumbled across this had I not lived in Russia. Because when I lived in Russia, I had to learn the language. And when I learned the language, one of the things I learned along the way is that they only have one word for teach and learn. It's called uchit. Ya uchu, I teach, but I, you also say the same thing for I learn. And depending on the context, is, of course, we have that. We have these words, like, I just can't bear it anymore. Now, they're not thinking of a big black thing that weighs 1,200 pounds. You know, when I say I can't bear this, I'm not talking about that thing that uh, forages in the woods, right? You know, because of the context of my sentence. But teach and learn is a little trickier. Because it's one thing for, for us to be in a group where you think that I'm the teacher and that you think that you're here to learn. It's, it's a totally different thing. So, so this is why it gets confusing. But in the Hebrew, there's no confusion whatsoever. You see? There's no, there's no distinction. Now, I wrestle with this from time to time. Wait a minute. Now, how does that work again? Because how can teach and learn do the same thing? Because in my mind, my whole life, I sat in a classroom and there was somebody in front who talked and lectured, gave me tests, you know, yelled at me because I was doing something stupid probably, and, and sent me to the office occasionally, you know, kicked me out of class, all that. Um, that, that was my experience and of course then church all my life it was the same way guy behind the pulpit doing all the and me doing all the you know teaching and learning it was this, this guy was there was a big line the teacher and the learner but really it's not in the Hebrew you see it's not and this challenges us I I, I want to read it mean, this verb means to teach to learn to study to teach to be taught to be learned um there's a teacher that I googled in Stetson University, and here's what she said, I like it. I'm quoting her. Her name is Margie Hale. She said, there's no such thing as teaching. There is only learning and helping others to learn. There's no such thing as teaching. There's only learning and helping others to learn. Uh, I mean, that makes more sense. To, I don't... It makes more sense over in this Hebrew category to me now, a little bit. Um, and then she quoted, she quoted Albert Einstein. Stein, he's a smart guy, right? He said, I never teach my pupils. I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn. I really like that. I didn't know Einstein ever said that, but I'll, I'm just going to trust you. She's quoting him correctly. You can, you can Google the facts for yourself. So, 
There's no such thing as teaching. There's only learning and helping others to learn. Now, she's, of course, a university professor. But, but that disarms her students, right? Because really, we're all learning. And that is the thing I need us to understand. We're all learning, all of us. And sometimes people come in here and think, oh, they're talking way over my head. No, no, listen, we are all learning. We are all learning. We can't all, I'd like to say we're all in third grade, but I can't say that because we're all in different grades. But we're all put in here together, to learn together, to learn together. We're all learning different things together. Well, I, I've said this for a reason. I, 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 I bring this out for a reason. Because this particular word, teach, learn, it, it's used all these different ways. Uh, sometimes teach, twice as many teaches as learn. It means more than that. The verb describes learning as learning war. The, it, this verb is meant to describe learning war. So when we're talking about God's judgments on the earth coming and the, 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 the inhabitants of the land will learn or teach uh, righteousness, it, it's, about, it's in the context of war. Now, you have, search these things out for yourselves. Don't take my word for it, but you'll find this is what, what the, what the uh, complete word study dictionary says. The verb describes learning war, training for war, or the lack of training for war. Now, this makes perfect sense to me when I look at something like Psalm 144 that says, Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. It's the same word, trains, same word. But now it's in context. It's in, it's, in the, it's in the context. It's no longer in my Greco-Roman East Western mindset context. It's in a biblical kingdom context that, that just happens to be written in the Hebrew language that I, I don't know that much about, you see. But I'm, but I'm diligent to go after these things because I'm learning now that this word, I'm learning that this word means to, to learn to be trained for war. And if, if, if there's one thing... I could get across to you about us, about this place, it's this. We cannot sing love songs and only in a time of war. And people, we are in a time of war. And, 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 so, and so, the sound, I just want you to look at a couple other scriptures. The sound changes when you're making the sound of war. And, 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 and this thing about when his judgments are released on the earth, the righteous will learn, the, the, the inhabitants will learn righteousness, will be trained in war that brings about righteousness. Because we'll be warring against the powers and principalities and actually taking back ground. Now, there's a war on the inside of you. And people sing about this thing all the time. There's a war on the inside. It's the arena to demonstrate my love for you. It's a beautiful song. I've sung that song for years. And, and it's true. But some people get so engrossed in the war on the inside of them that they never ever show up to the battle all around the earth that's about the kingdom coming forth. They're stuck in this loop of all, it's, it's all about them. It's a very me-centered, and it's not one or the other, it's both. It's not one or the other, it's both. You have issues, I have issues, these things continually nag us and plague us, but I, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. We have scriptures to, to use in our own minds that, that battle against this notion that we're always just wrapped up in this internal war, because there is a war on the inside of us. It's, we talked about it, it's a battle of light and darkness. Who's gonna, who, who are you going to be on this earth? How are you going to conduct yourself? It's about, are you gonna demonstrate the fruit of the spirit or the deeds of the flesh? It happens every single day. You wake up in the morning, you are, you are given another choice. Is it gonna be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control? Is it gonna be that or is it gonna be all the other stuff that I never even bothered to memorize? <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. They're in Galatians 5, don't you? 19, you know. All that other, oh, just, I don't even, but they're there and they're real. They're there and they're real. They're called the deeds of the flesh. Look them up, Galatians 5, 19, some other time. Now, I'm not sweeping them under the rug either, by the way. I'm just, just not me. Okay, 
I thought I was reading Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord my God, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Well, how is the deliverance going to come? When he says, my deliverer, my shield and my deliverer, well, how is the deliverance actually going to come on this earth? It, I'm telling you, beloved, the deliverance is going to come on the earth through you. If you're standing around waiting for God to do something, you don't understand. You are his hands on the earth. You are his fingers on the earth that are going to do battle. You are his voice on the earth. This is another word that gets confused in the, in the Bible. It gets translated, the voice of the Lord will thunder. But really, it gives the kind well, we're going to read that in a minute, Isaiah 31, 30, 31. And, and we're going to see that it, it's translated voice when it can interchangeably be translated sound or voice. Except that, when the Bible says the voice of the Lord will thunder, we, we're standing around waiting for some sound from heaven. Like, like the one that interrupted Peter when he was flapping his gums and he shouldn't have been quiet. But see, the sound of the Lord is going to be made through us. We're, there's no voice that's going to thunder from heaven all the time. In fact, I've never heard a voice thunder from heaven. How, is it, is it, maybe you have. Have you ever? Have you? It's awesome, right? I mean, of course, one person, out of all the collective years in this room, one, one event. No, no. The sound of the Lord is going to be heard through us. Through his people. We make the sound of the Lord on the earth. We see it in the kingdom all the time. Well, Second Chronicles 20. I, I, you can turn there if you want, but you all know the story. It's just about... I'm going to turn to Isaiah, but I'll just mention Second Chronicles 20. Why am I telling you all this? Because we, we have to learn here how to wage an effective warfare. We. And I'm, going to, I'm about to throw something out to you that I need your help with. Second Chronicles 20, it's about Jehoshaphat taking him into battle. In verse 17, well, let's, let's just turn there. Can you, let's do it. It'll just take us a minute. I, they, I forgot to set my timer. Where am I at, Dan? Uh, you got about 10 more minutes. Yeah, that's about right. Second Chronicles 20. You'll not need to fight this battle, verse 17. You'll not need to fight this battle. Amen. Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Don't fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. You make a sound that can raise up a sound of praise that shakes heaven and earth. You. No, not just me and John and a few of us that can sing, you know, kind of a little bit, play an instrument. Yeah, we can too. But I'm telling you right now, this means you. You can make a sound that shakes heaven and earth. It comes out of you. It can be this. We, we can't even, it's, I'm not even saying, I'm not even advocating we should all start clapping again. But I got to tell you something. We, we can't even clap through a whole song. I'm not saying you need to. I'm just saying we demonstrated today we can't anymore. The start of the 100 year revival, nonstop prayer meeting in Europe, started by nonstop prayer. They were marching around the table that had a Bible on it. And at the end, when they hit the optimum octave, and it was octave, is that it? When they hit that point, of the crescendo, and they could hit heaven, somebody ran over and slapped the Bible. And when they slapped the Bible, they all fell off the spirit. And the Holy Spirit fell in that community. That prayer meeting lasted for 100 years. So it's exactly what you're saying. That if you reach a certain point, and it's not a matter whether you clap or what you do, it's when God moves on you and then suddenly he takes over. Would God. Yeah, would God. 
So they rose early in the morning and went out in the wilderness. And Jehoshaphat stood and he said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Please, 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 for the love of everything holy, underline that in your Bible if it isn't underlined right now. Second Chronicles 20. Are we there? You're, you're, everybody in Second Chronicles 20? And so I just read um, verse 20. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Thank you. Put your trust in the Lord your God and you'll be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. Thank you, Lord, for your word that's alive and powerful. There's life in God's word. It's not just reading a book. There's life. But I got to tell you, it doesn't always feel like it's, there's life. But I just know there is by, by, because of my own life all these years. And so I diligently get in the Word, though I don't early get in the Word. And I love the people that do. They get up way before the crack of dawn. And they just got to do all this Bible stuff before they even go to work. It fascinates me to no end. So in the millennium, I'm hoping I'm going to be that guy. Maybe before. You never know. But I, 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 I want to read the, the rest of this. When he had consulted, verse 21, he consulted with people. He appointed those who sang to the Lord, who praised him in holy attire, and they went out before the army. This precedes the army. This praise, this worship, this warfare, it precedes the military coming together in a, in a, in a functional operation. The worship and the war is in the, with the voices and with instruments. And, and it's the sound, not of the Lord. It's we are making the sound of heaven. We were making something of the sound of heaven in here in a very minute, minuscule way this morning. Why? Because, people, there are lives at stake. There are battles and wars to be fought now. I can just go right down the line and just one by one by one by one, we could all talk about these wars that are going on within and without. But we've got to come to the place where regardless, we can't only focus on battles coming, going on within us, in our mind and in our soul. We have to, at some point, seek first the kingdom of God and trust him that all the other stuff is going to be taken care of along the way. Wow. Thanks for those. No, I mean that. Thanks for those. It's true. So he gets, them all, he gets them all together and they go before the army and say, give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. Boy, you know, the time you've got to give thanks the most is when it seems like you've got nothing to be thankful for. If, if, you, if you don't, I'm sure most of you here and everyone in this room knows what I'm talking about. I don't even have to talk about it. Verse 22. They began singing and praising. The Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and he lists all the enemies, and they were routed. And when they showed up, there was just nothing but corpses lying everywhere. This is a real story, and this really happened. And this kind of stuff still happens today in people's lives. It doesn't exactly, it's not an army where we're actually, not, not like they're blowing people up. Listen, there was a wedding that just happened. Where was it? Where was it? Just last night. A suicide bomber walks into a wedding party like we were at last night, screams something, presses the button, kills 30 people. That's war. That's war today. It's not a bunch of armies and tanks. There's that too, but there's all kinds. There's warfare. There's warfare going on all over the place on all different levels. It, warfare walks right into a wedding and pushes a button, and suddenly 30 people are killed. Did you, did you hear about that? It was Turkey, yes. It was Turkey. Young boy, 12 to 14 years old. Yes, and you got to have a people, we have to have a world view. We have to know what's going on around the world, especially, especially the Middle East. You have to know. I, I once heard a wise, wise, wise man, Derek Prince, say, if you want to know what God is doing, you don't have to look any further than what he's doing in the Middle East with the nation of Israel. This was 30 years ago. And truer words could not have been spoken, but, but I'll, I'll just repeat it just in case, because we have to repeat things all the time. Coming to the end of my time here, I've got a few minutes left. The Lord set the ambushes, and the enemy was defeated, but the, the praising and the worshiping, all right, now there's one last element to this praising and worshiping that, that I need us to understand, that there's different levels of power and authority that get released by the kind of sound that you can make. And I've got to tell you, I've seen this happen in my life 
several times now, and I always see that when, when I find myself, I don't want to find myself in the place, but I somehow do find myself in a place where I'm almost having to start over again with fundamental things that I thought I had under my belt. Now let me just point out one, one of those things in the context of what we're talking about, because content and context. Now look at, look at Isaiah chapter 30. Now we've started the scripture this morning in our little vignette in Isaiah 26 you recall we're talking about there'll be a time on the earth now that Isaiah 26 Isaiah prophesied that some 800 years before Jesus showed up on the earth 500 I don't remember exactly but centuries before Jesus showed up on the earth we all know that so when he prophesied that in Isaiah 26 of course it's all a prophecy and if there was one word that would sum up the prophecy of Isaiah, it would be about a king. A king and a kingdom. And if you look, read through the whole book of Isaiah several times, you'll see that it, it, boils, it distills down to a central theme. It's about a king that is coming on the earth and his kingdom. Of course, he's prophesying before Jesus walked the earth. But when he says this, when, when Isaiah says this, about when the ju judgments are on the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Was that for Isaiah's day? Or was it for our day? Or was it for a day to come in the millennial kingdom when one day Jesus is going to set up his righteousness on the earth and the inhabitants will be us and we will be actually teaching slash learning righteousness. Which day was it? Was it Isaiah's day? Was it our day in the present now? Or was it the day of the millennial kingdom in that day, the day of the Lord? Which was it? Which was he talking about? All of them. He's talking about my day here. My day. He's talking about your day right here. So, we, we said that in Isaiah 26. That there's good... That there's, judgments would be released and, and the inhabitants, that's me and you, you and I, the inhabitants of the land would actually learn slash teach righteousness. All right. So here we are jumping far ahead and this is the hard part, doing bullet points when there's four chapters in between each line, each word, each word is filled with life and, 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 and context. And I, we're going to skip four chapters. It just doesn't seem fair, does it? But we are. We're going right up to chapter 30. And here we go. So you even have to put your chapter. You've got to put the verse before, the verses after. You've got to put all this in context. And I'll trust that you can do that by the Holy Spirit. Because you've got to put the whole Word of God in context anyway. All right, so here we are in chapter 30. We're looking at verse 29. Let me just start just... Isaiah 30. Let me, let me just back up to 26 for, just to give us a little context. Okay, can I do that? The light of the moon will be as the light of the sun. It will be seven times brighter like the light of seven days. And this, of course, is in the age to come now. Isaiah is prophesying about the age to come. On the day the Lord binds up the fracture of his people and heals the bruise that he has afflicted. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from a remote place. Burning his is anger and his dense, dense is his smoke. His lips are filled with indignation. His tongue is like consuming fire. His breath is like an overflowing torrent which reaches the neck to shake the nations back and forth in a sieve. Are the nations being shaken right now? Well, we can, any of the headlines will tell you that they are being shaken like never before. To put the jaws of the people, the bridle which leads to ruin. But 29, listen, verse 29. Verse 29. You will have songs as in the night when you keep the festival. Gladness of heart as when one marches to the sound of a flute. Go to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. Verse 30. And the Lord will cause his sound of authority to be heard and descending of his arm to be seen in fierce anger, and in the flame of a consuming fire, in the cloudburst, the downpour, and hailstones, for the sound of the Lord, at the sound of the Lord, Assyria will be terrified. In other words, your enemy, the one Jehoshaphat was fighting against when we just read in Chronicles, the one you're fighting against today, the one they were fighting against in Isaiah's day, the one we'll be fighting against in the age to come. I'm telling you, 
they will be terrified when this sound is made. V visible and invisible enemies we're talking about. Visible and invisible. In the sound of the Lord, the enemy will be terrified when he strikes with the rod every blow of the rod of punishment which the Lord will lay on him will be with the music of tambourines and lyres, lyres. And in battles, brandishing weapons, he will fight them. Underline that scripture. Again, get the context. Let's not just think of these little round tambourines. There's a Hebrew context that goes far, far, far beyond that, but it does include that. It, but it's, it's a, one is a percussion sound and a lyre is a stringed instrument. So you have two things. You have percussion. And believe me, they weren't just, you can't, don't picture somebody just prancing around tapping a, a, a tambourine. Picture, picture some African tribe that's going. Picture that. Picture, because that's the only picture, the best picture we can have. Picture rows of percussion instruments just pounding boom 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 picture that I, I can't create that for you here now anymore again but there was a time there was a time we we created that kind of a sound and it shook heaven and earth believe me this is what we have to uh, we understand something here this is what we have to get back to now how things cycle I know we're going to learn more and more things why didn't the thing just keep building and building and building? People were launched all over. People are, the people that were making that sound are spread out in different places of the globe right now. And, and all we can say is we're moving together, but this is something that has to be created in order to shake heaven and earth. So I want you to understand. We, help me. Help me. I've said all that to say this. Take to heart, if you can, the fact that we need to believe God and pray in, I mean wrestle with, finding and having, assimilating musicians, singers, percussion players, you name it, horn, people that blow, little kids, it doesn't matter who it is, but they got, we're got, to, they got to be skilled. We got to get skilled, skilled musicians in here, skilled singers, more skill, I'm bigger, bigger, more powerful, more song, more musicians. We, we, we have to have these things in order to create the kind of environment that shakes heaven and earth and routes the enemy, you see? And No, listen, no, it's perfectly... What we should be concerned with is the day when we don't hear the pitter-patter of little feet. That's what we should be worried about. The day when we don't hear babies crying anymore. These are the guys we're contending for. And others. They're the ones we're fighting for. All right. Well, that's... Did I... Any questions? Any questions? No, no. They're fine. They're fine. Believe me. We'll train their hands for war. All right. Any, anything else? I, I just... I, I know we had to take a time out. But these things weigh heavily on me right now. Because I'm wrestling with this right now. And I want you to know that I'm sharing my wrestle with you. Because we're meant to wrestle with God. Jacob is a perfect example. We're, we're ordained to wrestle with God over these things. Now, your wrestle, I'm going to wrestle with you over the things you're wrestling with. We didn't do that. We did that. When? We did it. Catch Bob in the back back there. That's all right. That's fine. Okay, so... So let's, any questions before I just end right now? I'm asking again, what am I saying? God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know exactly what's going to look like. But I do know this. We've got to make a sound of war that's way, way bigger and louder. And uh, you'll know it when you hear it. You see, there's just, we're, we're, just, we're, we're restrained right now. And, and there's, there's things that need to be released. And they can only be released as a gathering together comes around. Now, we've got a good foundation. We've got a great foundation to build from. But we, not, we need now, we need to contend together to believe God, among other things, this whole issue of war and how we're going to make, make war. Because these are the ones that go out before the army. We're not even talking about the army yet. We're not even talking about that. I would love to do nothing more than talk kingdom military stuff. But we're back to, we're back to... Uh,
you, you, you've got to sing war songs in a time of war to wage an effective warfare. You, I, I, we're not going to stop singing love songs, just so you know. But you can't sing peace, peacetime songs in a time of war. And so we, we, we do need, I, I can't create a conference with the sound that they can create in a conference, the ones you see on YouTube, where there's 10,000 people in the room and they have a wall of sound. We can't create that, but we can still wage an effective warfare in our sphere. But we're, we're capable of doing a whole lot more. We just need the musicians. Does everybody understand me? And so I'm, giving, I'm putting that now from me. Well, I haven't really said it. I'm putting that now from me. I'm, sh I'm spreading it out. And so when, when you become friends with somebody, they start telling you, this is what I'm wrestling with. And this is one of the things we need to actually go forward in who it is that we are, what we do. This is how we move. This is how we lead people. Sound, altar, kingdom, priesthood, battle. All right, any questions? Anything else? So that, that while we're worshiping grace and worship, that the sound of heaven came and well does come down, even though we might not hear it at all. And, and, but when it does come down, that we, we will hear it in, in, in that time. So we don't want to forget about that. Oh, we're making the sound of heaven now. Don't, don't misunderstand me. The sound of heaven was in this place this morning. Yeah. Don't, 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 be, don't think that I'm not, not thankful for, for the, Lord's, the Lord's presence. I'm saying that out to people that yeah. may yeah. be coming to know the Lord. What we're talking about here is a window, a window opening, and, and, and there, there's a chance that we can actually uh, embrace a catalytic moment and then just something that will just catapult us to another level. But it, it, it's got to do with musicians. And so that's the wrestle. That's the wrestle. It's got to do with the sound that we make. Uh, and we have, to, we have to fight for that sound again. Uh, it, 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 this is what I had to do when I first started in ministry. I mean, years ago, just as a worship leader. And it, it, it had to happen every country I ever lived in. I had to, I'm back to just me and the guitar, and I had to start over again, creating some kind of a sound that would actually change people's lives. But just by the, by the place they entered into worship and entered into God's presence. But there's a king, a king who's on a throne and he wants to release really judgments. It's just judgments are not, they're, they're, they're things that make wrong things right. Judgments, don't be afraid of the judgments of the Lord. Please, it's make God taking something that's wrong and fixing it. He's correcting it. That's what a judgment of the Lord does. It corrects the things that are wrong. Are there any wrong things in your life? Well, we need to submit ourselves to the judgments of God. But we got this mindset that it's some scary thing. Well, it is a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the living hands of God. But I want you to say, he only wants to fix the wrong things for us. He wants to make wrong things right. And that's, this is the way that we do it here. Other places, I don't know how they do it, but this is how we do it here. All right, so would you stand with me? I thank you, Lord, for what you did this morning before every person in here uh, for, for Josie Whitney. I thank you, Lord, you are faithful.